Welcome to the post-COVID-19 recovery education series. Today we'll be talking about fatigue post-COVID-19. Following a COVID-19 infection, some people have symptoms that can continue for up to 12 weeks or sometimes even longer. There are several terms that are being used to describe this, including long COVID, post-acute sequelae of COVID-19, referred to as PASC, or post-acute COVID-19 syndrome, referred to as PACS. There are lots of different symptoms that people may experience with these conditions, but today we will be focusing on the symptom of fatigue. The first question you might ask is, what is fatigue? Fatigue is an overwhelming sense of exhaustion that can make it harder to do the types of things you want to do, such as getting dressed, grocery shopping, going for a walk, or socializing with friends. It also does not tend to get better with rest. There are lots of symptoms that you may experience with fatigue that are shown in the diagram on this slide. Some of the more common ones include feeling weary, weak, or having a lack of energy, feeling tired or exhausted, like you need to rest or sleep more, having difficulty with the tasks you would normally do in the day, such as cooking, washing, or exercising, feeling like you have to push yourself to complete the tasks you want to do in a day, mood changes, irritability, or disinterest in activities that normally bring you joy, poor concentration or focus, and reduced appetite. What causes post-COVID fatigue? There are many different reasons why you may feel fatigued after a COVID-19 infection. Some of these may include changes to how your body produces energy for your activities, changes to the natural chemicals in your body. These are called neurotransmitters and affect how many systems in the body work. And finally, how you breathe. Sometimes people's breathing patterns can change or can affect many body systems and your levels of fatigue. What makes post-COVID fatigue last a long time? Many things can affect how long fatigue will last. Things that can make fatigue worse include poor sleep, if you have other work responsibilities or help care for others, anxiety or stress, or in some cases if you have low level of activity. The exception to this is if you have symptoms of post-exertional malaise. The post-COVID-19 recovery education series also has a module on post-exertional malaise which can be found on the PHSA website, which is linked in the description of this module. We recommend that you watch that module to learn more about post-exertional malaise. Over time, your fatigue should improve. If this is not the case and your fatigue is getting worse or it's unchanged for over a month, consider seeing your doctor or other health professional, such as a physiotherapist. What can you do to help your fatigue? Pacing. This involves planning and spreading out your activities. We will discuss this more later in the presentation. Be kind to yourself. Recognize that fatigue is real and give yourself time to recover. Eat well. Eating well helps your body get the nutrients it needs to recover. It is also important to stay hydrated. Keep active. In many cases, energy levels can be helped by staying active. Work with your physiotherapist to start to slowly increase your activity once your symptoms have stabilized. Relax. Take time out of your day for yourself. Try relaxation techniques such as yoga, meditation, reading, or taking a bath. Relaxation can help improve sleep and minimize stress levels. Write an activity diary. Consider keeping a record of what activities you do throughout the day and how you feel for one to two weeks. This information can help you to discover which activities are energy boosters and promote good days, and which are energy drainers and potentially cause bad days. This can then be used to balance your activities throughout the week. Talking. Sharing what you are experiencing with others may help to make the situation feel more normal and help you to realize that you are not alone. And finally, sleep. Focus on getting a good night's sleep. Some things that can help promote sleep include keeping a regular bedtime, limiting the use of cell phones or screens in the hours leading up to bed, and reducing light and noise in your bedroom. Why is pacing important? After COVID-19, you may feel that you have less energy than before, or that it takes more energy to do certain activities than it previously did. Situations that need physical, cognitive, or emotional effort may be exhausting. 
To learn more about this, you may wish to review the material on Your Energy Battery, available from the PHA website of the Post-COVID Recovery Clinic. You can find the link following this presentation in the description of the module. You may notice that if you push through your symptoms, you may feel worse. Although this might not be dangerous, it can lead to a boob and bust cycle where you go until you can't go anymore and then crash with worsening symptoms. Pacing is a way to help minimize the ups and the downs in your symptoms, energy, and ability to be active. How to pace. Pacing is about being smart with how you use your energy. Think of it like money in a bank account. You need to budget how you use your energy so it doesn't run out so that it can last you days, weeks, or months. Think about which activities in your life are energy boosters and make you feel better, and which are energy drainers and might make you feel more fatigued. For example, going shopping might be an energy drainer, but walking outside might be an energy booster. Some activities, such as exercise, might take energy, but still be a good investment as over time they help you to improve your energy budget. If you find your symptoms are getting worse, remember to stop, rest, and pace. The idea behind this is to stop what you are doing, give your body a break, and let your symptoms settle, and then pace your activities moving forward to help avoid a flare-up of your symptoms. The four P's can be used to help plan your essential activities and help you to save energy. These are plan, pace, prioritize, and position. The three D's can be used for non-essential tasks that could either be completed by someone else or completed at a later date. These are delete, delegate, and defer. We will discuss each of these in more details on the following slides. The four P's, plan. Taking the time the night before to plan your following day or plan some of your week can help you budget your energy. List activities and schedule tasks that need to be done, not the ones that could be done. Schedule planned rests and breaks throughout your day. For example, you might complete one activity, then have a rest and then do another. Try to plan your activities around when you feel best. For example, if you tend to feel better in the morning, Schedule more difficult or more energy draining tasks for the morning. Pace. Consider breaking up larger tasks by doing a little bit each day. Take your time when completing a task. Take rest along the way if you need to. Plan to take breaks before you feel tired. Spread your energy drainers over the week. Consider using heart rate monitoring or an activity journal to help you pace. More information on how to monitor heart rate and activity journals are available on the PHSA website under the symptom management fact sheets. Prioritize. Decide which activities are most important to you and do these first. Invest your energy wisely throughout the day or week. Ensure you are scheduling in energy boosting activities. Position. Think about how you position your body when you do activities and aim to use positions or equipment that allow you to save energy. For example, sit on a chair when you are cooking or washing instead of standing up. Use a cart at the grocery store instead of carrying a basket or items in your arms. If you do need to lift something, try and use two hands instead of one, and try and store items within easy reach and distance around your home. The three Ds. The three Ds can be helpful for tasks that can either be done by someone else or for ones that do not need to be completed right away. Delete. Remove any non-essential tasks from your to-do list. These may be tasks that really never needed to be done or ones that could be done distantly in the future once you have recovered. Delegate. Consider asking a family or friend to do a task for you if it's something that needs to be done but that doesn't require you specifically to do it. Defer. Temporarily pause a task that doesn't need to be completed right away. You can schedule it in another week or time when you feel you have more energy. Barriers to pacing. Energy. We recognize that even the strategies we are suggesting require some energy to put into practice. This might feel impossible on some days. We will discuss how you might start with small steps that feel more manageable on the following slide. The word fatigue itself. This can often be confusing for people as they think it just means feeling tired. 
We know that this feeling of fatigue post-COVID-19 goes well beyond that and can feel like you have absolutely nothing left in the tank, but this can be hard to explain to people in your lives. Invisible symptoms. Fatigue cannot always be seen, yet it can make it impossible to complete all the tasks that you might normally do. We live in a culture that often assigns value to productivity, and there can be a stigma of misunderstanding fatigue as being lazy or making excuses. This can be difficult for others to understand and can make it hard to explain why implementing the four P's or three D's is necessary for your recovery. Here are some practical tips to get you started. First off, start with small steps. A good place to start might be to take an inventory of your day-to-day -day life for a week and think of all the tasks you do from morning to night. Write these down. Now categorize them as what is essential and what is not essential for you to do. For the essential task that you have to do, apply the four P's. For the non-essential task, apply the three D's. Sometimes there will be circumstances that can't change and you might have to do something on a specific day or at a specific time. In these situations, see if you can modify the environment instead of the activity to reduce your fatigue. This might include things such as turning off video on Zoom so you can reduce eye fatigue or take time to stretch. You may also need to take a five minute break in a dark, quiet space. Dimming lights or using noise canceling headphones can also be helpful to block extra stimulus and reduce fatigue. If you're wondering where you can get more help and information about fatigue, here are a few sites listed below that have more information. If you have any other questions that are not answered by this presentation, please seek guidance from a healthcare professional, such as your doctor or physiotherapist. This is a collaborative effort of patients, clinicians, researchers, and administrators. Thank you.